Hello everyone, this is HGS Casting here, back with some more Bronze League Heroes! One of these days, I'm gonna hold that note. I know I said this last time, as long as I can, and you guys cannot even say that I did not warn you, because I totally, totally have in the last couple of videos. Either way, it is gonna be Bronze League Heroes, where we cast the very best of the very worst. Now, before I introduce these players, I do want to mention one thing. This game does slightly bend the rules, but you know what? I made the rules, so I can change them anytime I want for Bronze League Heroes. Anyways, my friend Sinvicta, who's the one that sorts through the replay, said Husky. He, he always addresses me as Husky, never, never by my real name. He says, Husky, this game is something that you should probably cast, but be warned, it does change the rules just a little bit and you know what i'm a little bit flexible i like change i like to adapt to change and i actually enjoy change so in this game it is still going to be a lower level game don't worry guys we're not changing that much it is going to be a lower level game here but it is between friends apparently they actually did a family tournament is the term that's invicta used and i haven't seen this game so i'm trying to describe it as best I can without actually having seen it. Uh, but oh, wait, 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 we actually have a proxy going on over here. So that's when you know it's good, is we are going to have that proxy. Apparently, it was a family tournament within the clan DNA. And apparently, the guy who sent the replay, it's his girlfriend versus his dad. I think I said that right. So the guy who sent it, it's his dad versus... The guy who sends it, girlfriend. I want to make sure I'm not mixing those things up. We are going to be having a double proxy gate here, which uh, is kind of amazing. I am all for that. And this wall-in is, is SCV secure. SCV not lowering that door to get out. He's just trying to, to parkour his way out of there. There he goes. Finally does end up lowering that. So it's going to be, imagine this. You have a girlfriend. Good job. And also your dad plays StarCraft and you are making them fight each other, which I personally find to be hilarious. So I'm like, you know what? That already sounds like a TV show that I would watch. So I might as well cast this game. So it's Invicta. The game's bad. It's his fault. That That's all there is to it. However... However, to support Sinvicta, please go subscribe to him. His link is down below. He does live streams of sorting through the Bronze League Hero games. And uh, if you would like to send Bronze League Hero games, send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. A couple people were sending them to my other email. That is not the one that we, we sort replays through. So huskyreplays at gmail.com. Please do make sure that they are on the newest patch. That makes the sorting process much more quick. And uh, either way, let's go ahead and introduce our players. I do know that it is a little bit behind our, our normal program scheduling to introduce our players at this point. But either way, down to the bottom right side, it is going to be Blue Siege, who is very low on workers. Not really that big of a fan of workers, apparently. He does have a barracks going to be on the way. And his opponent, who I'm assuming is the female in this is going to be Pink Void and playing as Pink Protoss, which I, I can actually get behind. I can respect that. And actually, we have a bunker going to be going down. It is spotted right away by the probe. So proxy, proxy shenanigans going down for both players. However, you do have to remember that there are no zealots back at home to defend this. So it is going to be all up to the probes here. The SCV trying to build the bunker, but unfortunately does go down. Apparently, we're on a mod of the game that has first blood. Apparently, there was a first blood that just happened there. Uh, okay. That you guys are as surprised as I am. The Zelts are going to be working on this wall. The Marines should probably go ahead and join in on cleaning this one out. As uh, this is this is definitely some Bronze League Heroes action that we are seeing right now. As the Proxy Bunker unable to happen, the Supply Depot will go down. But the Marines are actually in a really good spot to be cleaning up these Marines. Uh, excuse me, cleaning up the Zelts. I think they're going to be able to kill all the Zelts. No Micro required. Actually, the last Marine here may be the one that saves the day, helping DPS down that last Zealot. But this is where the derp lots are strong, is it looks like they're going to go ahead and start just rallying their way in there. And there is nothing that is better than a Bronze League Hero Zealot. I mean, look at this guy. He's trying to get inside, but he's like, wait, there's supply depots there. I'm going to stand at the bottom of the cliff. Uh, no, I'm going to stargaze. I'm going to look over the cliff. I'm going to look at these rocks. Really, there's just something special about Bronze League Hero Zealots. And again, that Zealot's going to try and run up there. Nope. Really, that Zealot is super indecisive to the point where he's actually almost dead. As he does have uh, 6 HP there. Good job, little Derplot. Back at home, though. Uh, Pink Void, what is she? I'm assuming she. If, if I get the name switched up, I, I'm just going based on the fact that it's Pink and the name is Pink Void. My dad, however, would probably name his in-game name uh, Pink Void. Uh, he does like Pink Floyd, so maybe that'd be like his play on play on words there. I don't know. SCV, though, is going to go ahead and try and find out exactly where these gateways are. I think he realizes that something is amiss because he had an SCV back in the base and didn't see anything. There we go. Lots of Zelts have been spotted. No Stalkers here, though, so these Zelts really are never going to be able to get inside that base, I'm afraid. Uh, this SCV should be afraid as well. It looks like he will actually go down. No Micro necessary in Bronze League. Just go ahead and throw those units away. As soon as they're outside of your base, they are as good as dead. 
And uh, a lot of gas here saved up for Blue This is actually going to be your pro tip of the day. As Terran, you really don't need a lot of SCVs on gas, especially if you're not using any gas, which I think is part of the pro tip. But uh, normally as Terran, they, they actually need gas the least out of the other races, I would say. That's my own opinion, and I am sticking to it. Uh, they they kind of need the less gas. So if you are a Terran player, don't don't worry about getting your second gas. A lot of times, even until you get your second base, uh, is kind of how I play Terran a lot. Just because Marine Marauder is so good in the early game that if you're still learning StarCraft 2, just go for Marine and Marauder off one gas and then expand and then get your second gas. That's my pro tip. I personally feel like macroing and getting out as many workers is literally the most important thing you can do. Because right now, the saturation, it needs some help. It's like Los Angeles right now, and it's drought. It needs a lot more saturation, as we do have quite a few Marines, though. And I, f I almost feel like Bronze League Hero Marines are better than Bronze League Hero Zealous. Right now, both players are supply blocks, so this game is basically just... They basically hit the pause button. They're like, hang on, hang on. Uh, let's let's have a gentleman gentleman game here where we don't actually attack or really build any supply depots. Zealots right there trying to see if there's a third base. There's not even a second base yet. So those Zealots getting way ahead of themselves right now. Two Marines down the low ground trying to uh, spot what's going on. Oh, attacking from the high ground. I like it. Very devious. Unfortunately, can't actually... Is that going to be in range? I honestly don't know. Nope, slightly out of range. Those Marines, hey, careful. Careful, guys. You do not want to go down there. There you go. Attack them. Then we will fight in the shade from all these bullets that are raining down onto the Zelts. It's only two Marines. Like, what are those Zelts doing? Why would you go over there? There's Marines on the high ground. You can't actually attack those. And these guys ready for the sneak attack. Going to be busting down these boulders. Lots more Marines on the way for Blue Siege. Does he have something that actually costs gas on the way? He does have the factory with a tech lab add-on and a starport to follow it up. Is it going to be fatty drops? Is it going to be a sweet timing attack? Or is it just going to be a couple of medevacs? These are the hard-hitting questions that we'll, we will find out pretty soon. The answers to. We do have a robotics facility on the way. So we are now transitioning into the early mid-game. Uh, about normally when you would be transitioning into the late mid-game for the average player. However, this is Bronze League Heroes. So we, we set very low expectations. And as the co-founder and captain of Team Low Expectations, I feel like this is uh this is what you should expect always set those expectations low there's gonna be that 10 minute warp gate right now could warp in some stalkers if he decides to oh a warp prism here pink void feeling quite uh quite risque gonna be going for the much more difficult to control warp prism now the reason i say that is because in bronze league heroes anytime there's a unit that does that you basically have to micro for it to be good not normally a good situation here this one marine though he is being a hero look at that apm it's probably skyrocketing yep up to 29 average apm with this one marine might actually be able to kill a zealot here this is some high octane action right now with this back and forth micro what's going to happen with that marine we don't know stay tuned to another exciting episode of Bronze League Heroes. These elves going to be chasing that Marine all the way back home. That Marine, uh, watch out though. He does get intercepted. Sea Shake ready to go. These dirt plots really only accomplishing menial labor by, by moving these rocks. That's all they did this whole game. And then they ran up to their death. So no good for them. There's that hero Marine though. He's got one kill and is still somehow alive. He has lived to tell the tale. Hopefully he gets promoted into another match uh, where he's not being controlled like this. But that's okay. That's okay. Remember, the whole point of Bronze League Heroes cast the very best of the very worst, but to remind you that base trade, hello, but to remind you that uh, StarCraft's meant to be fun. Doesn't matter how good or bad you are, it can still be fun. We do have a Twilight Council on the way. Hey, hey! And plus one attack on the way for Pink Void as well. I don't know that's going to be helping out these Zealots, which just can't seem to get anywhere near their opponent. I really don't know about this drop. It's got to be tough. We do actually have a lot of medevacs uh, on the way. And I guess the medevacs are actually a great unit for any level of play. If you're really good, you do lots of drops and, of course, heal your army. If you're really bad, they just kind of passively heal your army. So I am okay with that. It is going to be a drop directly inside the main base and actually going to be doing a warp in as well. Make sure that you actually unload the other zealots. There we go with the wombo combo. Actually going to be getting six zealots in this mineral line. And the reaction time from Blue Siege looking to be top notch as uh, about 20 seconds have gone by. The Marines finally getting the message that, hey, our families are dying. Uh, does decide to go for the War Prism first. Might want to go for the Zealots here. The War Prism control is definitely top 100% on the North American server. So great job there. And we do have the Zealots eventually going to get cleaned up. That plus one attack definitely actually helped in killing off the SCVs. You can see eight of them have gone down. Uh, more medevacs are going to be on the way. And actually, we could be seeing a Doom Drop, which in Bronze League Heroes, Doom Drops are really just 
any drop can be a doom drop as we just saw in that last drop there just a couple of zealots a handful of zealots really you know if i lived in starcraft world i feel like i could hold six zealots in my hand so it literally was a handful of units being dropped there only six zealots managing to do eight scvs worth of damage plus of course delaying that mining and uh, now there's no one mining on gas which uh you know you know when i said that terran don't need gas as much as other races they do still need some gas though so hopefully getting those workers back into the gas before he completely runs out here's going to be the medevac drop up to the top left side Hero Marine right there still feeling like he's keeping those units out of the main base. War Prism here looks like it's going to be rallying back here and actually individually clicking on these units to pick up. That's that's actually pretty hilarious. I can't believe uh, that uh, we're actually seeing that. We do have an expansion finally going down because he's going to individually pick up these units. Oh, there's one Zelt. There's another one. A third and number four. We'll see if that War Prism decides to go for the main base once again. I think that it will. A big drop right here could actually kill off this expansion. Decides to go for the kill, though. Going for the throat now. The jugular, uh, the temple, and all other vulnerable parts of the body, except actually not going in the mineral line. Just going to be going for the production right here. And the siege tank probably going to be doing lots of friendly fire damage if they are actually this close together. As it uh, does look like the mushroom core is going to get taken out very quickly. No photon overcharge. This main base is as good as dead. The drop down here uh apparently warping that in a little bit prematurely as the marines are where are they doing they're trying to get off the pylon getting stuck on each other though just being a little bit special but here come the derp lots this time though the derp lots are uh doing much more damage than you might expect already up to 10 kills soon to be more if those SCVs don't run away as the main base is going to go down i guess you could call this a base race but it's more of a complete lack of defense for a doom drop and like i said in bronze league heroes every drop is a doom drop as really no reaction time here whatsoever just lifting off the entire base right now probably wants to float that away to do something productive siege tank right there uh gonna be able to get a couple of kills with the marines actually just gonna be going straight for the nexus instead of those juicy juicy probes some of the marines in the back i feel like we're watching warcraft 2 they just don't know how to get around this army and if you guys have ever played Warcraft 2, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The probes trying to escape here. No stim pack has been researched. And uh, SCV, this SCV is out for blood. Why there is an SCV in this army, I have no idea. But that is okay because it is Bronze League Heroes. Gonna repair the siege tank. So I guess he knows something that I don't. As the medevacs here, they are super pissed as well. They're just gonna look very angrily at these probes and say, Hey, don't you try. Oh my god, we have an expansion all the way over here as well. Medivac's going to be chasing those down. Uh, you can't pick up your opponent's units. And we have a drop over here, which I think got completely forgotten about because it could easily kill off that Mothership core. But for now, it looks like the Siege Tank right here can't attack the Assimilator because it's too close. Can't attack the other one because it's too far away. The Marines got to finally unload this Medivac. He did remember, oh, I do have some units there. Mothership core does go down. This base does remain, though. And uh, the Zealots over here have forced everything to lift off. They should probably hang out here just to prevent that Command Center from actually landing by as much time as he possibly can. No, the one Hero Marine, you're going to die a zero instead of a Hero. Hero, yeah, yeah, he got sliced in half. He's half the man he used to be. As uh, it does look like that unit is going to take it. It does look like the siege tank here, slowly working down, realizing that hey, if I go out of siege mode, I can shoot much more closely to myself. And that is exactly what's going to be happening right now. And the zelts over here are indeed delaying this. So really, the income for either player is basically zero. It looks like this base just now getting up. So it does look like Pink Void can do a comeback. I don't know if this army actually knows about the base on the right side. I don't think that it does. And it does look like some of the Marines got to be sacrificing themselves. The Siege Tank's like, hey, what are you guys doing? Don't do it. Does back up at the very last second and will save his main base. Can now land this, but ended up losing way more Marines than he needed to for that. But but all, all there is to say is Bronze League Heroes. And all I say, this is why I love Bronze League Heroes, because you actually don't know who's going to win until somebody leaves the game. And even then, the person who leaves the game is not necessarily the person who was losing. We've seen that a couple of times, and it is always awesome. SCV is going to go ahead and scout this out. It looks like one Zealot warping in. Has Pink Void made any attacking unit other than Zealots? I actually think no. As it does like the war person got to try and get after SCV. This SCV has, has is out for blood. He is he has big aspirations as he might actually just die of these siege tanks though from that splash damage. And I, are these guys even in range of that building? I feel like they're just out of range right there. That SCV still somehow surviving the splash damage dangerously close to him as it will take out these gateways. Goes for the pylons. This base over here does remain that we have that warp gate done. Can easily upgrade that into warp gate. Probably wants to spend some of this gas getting some tech up. And down goes Warp Gates. Where's that SCV at? Did he die? 
Did that SCV die? I feel like he did. I feel like our SCV... Oh, no, he's still alive. Here he is. Here he is. And he is all healed up now by these medevacs. What is in these medevacs? Just four random Marines hanging out. We're going to keep an eye, though, on our friendly neighborhood SCV, which actually, this is like... This is like the neighbor that looks like a friendly neighborhood SCV. You know, they sit on their porch. They greet you as you walk by. You know, they let you know if you have a package by texting you. But then all of a sudden, when a home intruder is anywhere near your house, they fly over there, stab them in the brain with their drill, and then go back to sitting on their porch. Like, that is what this SCV is. He looks nice and harmless, but man, you had better not mess with him. This base does stand, though, and is apparently top secret as it has not been scouted. The siege tanks... Apparently doing all the heavy lifting here. Not quite sure what's going on with this army right now, but the supplies are relatively even. And you have to remember that uh, Blue Siege not actually... Wait, wait, is that his only SCV? That is his only SCV. This SCV is being is really carrying this army. Is he inside those medevacs? Is he going to unload here? Yep, there he is. The last SCV in the game. Uh, and the Orbital Command can't actually make anything, which means that SCV needs to be building supply depots right now, but that would be way too easy. Why do that when you can have the extra DPS of an extra SCV? These... These are the good questions that you have to ask yourself. Something you really need to contemplate in life. As it does look at the medevacs, really have no idea about the space. Does know about the, I believe, the stuff in the top left. No, he doesn't. He actually did not scout that geyser. So he is unaware that there is a geyser up there. Maybe figuring it out momentarily. But where is this army actually going? I feel like it has no idea where it's going. The uh, Is the base over on the right side going to be scouted or not? Still completely unscouted over here. I mean, surely this army is going to scout it out on the right side. There's really nowhere else for them to go. They've scouted kind of every other base on the map. Here we go. Doom drop to the right side, baby. Loading up every single unit. And here we go. Marches to the right. No! No, go back. You better go up there. There, there literally is a completely defenseless base right here. That is inches away from where you've scouted. But wait, there's more stalkers. Uh-oh, all of a sudden, Ping Void realizing there's a unit that shoots air and warps in those stalkers and is going to be shooting down this orbital command. It might actually get in the red. I don't think it'll die just yet, but it now is officially in the red. The SCV is going to have to save it, but at the same time, the attack over here, did you spot it? Yep, spots one warp gate. Decides to retreat away from the sheer terror and thought of attacking a building. I think it's too much for all of us to handle. Gonna go ahead and unload this army right here. Might be able to kill off this entire base. You probably want to unload the units here. And there we go. There's not enough money for another Nexus. A couple probes go down. Don't siege up that tank. It's only gonna do bad damage to yourself. But whatever, it's too late. It's already happened as the probe's going to go ahead and run out of there. Uh, it does look at these stalkers. We're actually up to five stalkers right now. Way more than would have ever expected to see. This command center needs to drop some mules. Needs to land and drop those mules. Probes are going to try and chase it down. As it does look at these Marines, going to be able to finally clean up this base. There are still, of course, these two structures over here. So it's not going to be an elimination game. As we have a pylon going to be going down the left side as well. But again, no next side. And actually, I think this orbital command is just going to burn it down. I mean, where can you actually land it to save it? The answer is nowhere, especially with those stalkers in pursuit. And the main base is going to go down. We got the starport floating. So this should actually be a Terran win or a tie. Worst case scenario, because the buildings are floating to the bottom left side, which we've seen uh, time and time again in Broadly Heroes. As it does look at this orbital, is going to explode. So is that barracks. Some of these units cannot actually be killed off, though. With that Nexus dead, that has sealed the fate of Pink Void. As long as Blue Siege does not mess this up, it's nearly impossible to mess it up. And there goes the hopes of either player having an economy or an army or really anything other than the units they have right now. It is 35 supply to 38. But you have to remember that at this point in the game, workers mean nothing. This SCV is still somehow alive. Where is that SCV? It's not letting me click on it. Maybe it's in a medevac. Is it in the medevac? Yes, it is. The one SCV inside that medevac is ready for some blood. It's ready for the final countdown. It's ready for the final battle. And we are going to have to see exactly how this final battle goes. I mean, this game should be over at any point. I mean, basically just run these armies into each other, see what comes out. And I think it's going to be a lot of dead Protoss units. Is this, is, is this really just going to be kind of a cat and mouse back and forth as both these players try and figure out, okay, where is my opponent at? Because there's really no reason, uh, really no way to keep track of each other if you think about it. As the, uh, the, the medevacs, oh, oh, there's a war prism. So there's something he can kill off if he decides to do that. And he does. So down goes the War Prism. Now, I will say that Pink Boy knows where this army is at. The War Prism guy gather. Is there going to be some sweet Gosu War Prism micro in the midst of this major battle? We are about to find out. 
as this army is marching into a good location to actually engage. And it does look like the Stalkers may intercept. No, they're here just a moment too late as the Medivacs get out of there completely unscathed. Really no way to repair those Medivacs either. And you know what's interesting is this SCV could be building uh, a, a command center right now. And actually the Stalkers might be able to kill off one of them. No, boosts out of there again at the last second as the Medivacs trying to find an angle to escape at. And if these Stalkers go over here, they could easily intercept. It does look like though the Medivacs going to get out of there. One Stalker, he's breaking away from the pack. Uh, I have no idea where this guy is going, though. He has a very deliberate order to go attack this starport right now. And the Medvac's going to be hanging out over here. So this is kind of a cat and mouse game. The problem, though, is that really Blue Siege could force this into a draw. I don't know if we're going to be seeing a draw or not. But uh, with the buildings on the floating on the left side, there's nothing really that Pink Void can do. I will say, though, that SCVs could just build a command center. I don't know. I don't know why that's completely off the table of uh, options at this point, is building a command center. Wait, wait, wait. We may be seeing the final conclusion here as the Stalkers here. No, they react a little bit too late. There's going to be the unloading of the army. That's not that scary of an army, but here we go. Probes in the mix. It is a scary army once it's fully unloaded. The siege tank goes down. Other siege tank uh, in the back, though, just doing lots and lots of damage. It does like these Stalkers able to kill off the majority of this army. That plus one attack is actually making a huge difference can it kill the medivax is the scv still alive that's the real question yes it is the scv is still in one of these medivacs not actually being unloaded in the midst of that battle or even if it was it was reloaded back up into that medivac I cannot believe we were actually seeing this where our Protoss player managing to kill off the majority of that army. You do have to realize, though, that all the probes, or at least the majority of them, did fall right now. So really, these medivacs can just fly everywhere and drop, and that army is completely out of position right now. As uh, it does look at the structures up on the top left side have finally been revealed. And, of course, there are the ones that are going to be down there. Stalemate detected. The game will end in three minutes. Unless any player gathers resources, researches an upgrade, produces a unit, constructs a building, or destroys in enemy buildings. So it does look like right now, that's exactly what's going to be happening here is a drop over the top left side. That's going to reset that stalemate timer and should kind of cue the end of the game here pretty soon. Oh, finally going to be building a command center. That hero SCV, literally this is the, this is the SCV to rule them all as uh, he is the only worker that's left on the map that can actually do anything productive. The pylon's going to go down. It does look like the assimilator's going to go in. However, if this SCV dies, if this gets scouted, then it is all over. The medevac right here, very, very low on HP, and more medevacs extremely low on HP as well. That angle not looking so good. Down goes the medevac with a lot of units inside, and the other one as well. Oh, three Marines, and this may get spotted right now, and indeed it does. Blue Siege throws this game away as Pink Void manages to make something happen, tries to save the SCV, but not today. That is going to be it, and this may actually be a forced... I mean, it has to be, right? It has to be a forced uh, stalemate right now as Pink Void pulling out the big plays. The War Prism is going to go ahead and follow that keep an eye on exactly what's going on but I feel like at this point this game is actually over there's only a couple marines inside it may actually end in a stalemate and uh, do you guys concede to a draw Pink Void says no as Red Void is saying you cannot kill him and uh, I think that Pink Void Pink Void definitely only because OP Terran units fly and if my dad wants he can try and kill your buildings which I think is the way to go with the three marines which in all honesty could still happen Really can still happen, actually, at this point. Although, I guess with it's spotting with the uh, with the War Prism there. And she is saying, go for it. You still can't win. If you can kill one more, I'll concede to lose. So, we're going to have to see exactly if they actually manage to kill off one more building or one more unit. Raising the stakes right there. Unloads the Marines over here. Uh-oh. 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 Down it goes. Now down to two Marines. Literally nowhere to run. As it does look like the Stalker is just able to chase this Medivac. And tries to unload over here. I don't think it's going to be enough to actually kill it off. Oh, going for it. Going for the Warpers. Only on one, unloads one Marine, though, because why would you Why would you put half your army out on the field when you can just put your other half? Uh, and, oh, got to try to get out of there. So this game is basically over at this point. I don't normally speed up games, but at this point, this is where you cue the Benny Hill theme. And uh, really, there's just nothing left on the map. I mean, the supplies are 4 to 19. And when half of your supply is two Marines, that's when you know you're in trouble. The medevac here trying to make something happen. It may be a stalemate in just a moment once again. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me. Getting the hiccups. It may be a stalemate immediately. Uh, I, I think that it is. The medevac really has nowhere to go. And the Stalkers is trying to intercept. And really, I mean, in, in my heart of hearts, the Protoss has won this game. 
Uh, Blue Siege, unfortunately, it just is not your day. So this game is not going to be ending with a bang, but man, was it a hilarious game anyway. It does look at the medevac here. Oh, not going to go down just yet. Stalker's Tilt trying to intercept, and there's literally no way for Blue Siege to even kill off this War Prism. Unless he manages to micro perfectly. There's going to be dropping one Marine. Trying to kill it off. Still deciding not to drop the second Marine. And in he goes. The medevac does take one shot of damage. And it does look like Pink Point has left the game. And it looks like that very well could have been a stalemate. Because nothing had really died uh, at, at all. At all for the last couple of minutes there. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy it. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.